Lynn with National Cat Groomers here. And I wanted to talk to you about a conversation I have several times, and I just had it again this morning. And so I thought that I would share my responses. So it's very common that I get questions about doing just brush outs on cat clients from both cat groomers as well as dog groomers who groom cats. So usually the, the conversation starts out with, hey girl, what dematting spray do you use? And I say, I don't use any, I demat in the dryer. And they go, oh, well I mean during brush outs, like my clients just want me to do nails and a brush out um, on their cat. And I just say, I don't offer that. And then we just stare at each other. <laughs> scene. <laughs> okay, it's a very commonly asked question or scenario that comes up to me as a cat groomer. Look, I just don't do brush outs. Why? I think you're not getting to the root of the issue. The issue is either that the cat is matted to some degree, either they just have a few clumps or they have a larger area of matting that has accumulated, or the issue is that the owner has noticed that the cat is shedding, they've got a lot of dead coat hanging around, and they want you to do something about it. Both of these problems can definitely be helped by a full groom. Bath, blow dry, comb out, the works. So my why number two, so my first one is that I don't think you're getting to the root of the issue. Why number two, I don't do brush outs because I think that the bath and blow dry is much less stressful than just a brush out. Brushing dirty hair is really tough on kitties. You're pulling, your comb or your brush is catching on the thick patches of greasy hair, you're tugging on delicate cat skin, nobody is having a good time in this scenario. Versus a warm massaging bath, you're wrapping them in the thick comfy towel, you're using warm air to blow dry and you're pushing all that dead coat away from the skin. So that combing or dematting is really just a quick flick with the comb because you're dryer has done most of the work. Your cat doesn't even notice it. So let's be real here. Clean, degreased, and dry coat slides right out. Much less work, much less battery on the cat's skin, and you end up with a beautiful finish instead of staticky, crunchy coat left behind. Just nasty. And also here's a bonus why. Why I don't use dematting sprays or products? Well, we've already discussed how clean hair combs through much easier than dirty coat. I wouldn't need a product in that instance because it's just gonna be left behind and way down the coat. Now, why wouldn't I use a dematting product and do a brush out? Well, same reason. You're spraying the product on, you're ripping the coat out, and then what? The product is still left behind on the cat's coat when you hand it back to their owners. And what do cats do all day? They lick themselves all over. So that product you put on, perfumes, silicones, whatever is in it, that cat is going to ingest it along with dead, greasy coat that was left behind. Not good. And I highly doubt any dematting spray on the market says on the bottle that it's appropriate for cats to eat. No thanks. So we've established why you shouldn't do brush outs, but I can hear you now. But Lynn, that's what my clients are asking for. They only want the brush out on their cats. Okay, this is a separate issue. Girl, why are you letting your customers dictate your business? Why are they deciding what services you offer, how much it'll be? Heck, I mean, why don't you just let them tell you everything else about your business? No, you are the expert here. You are the business owner. You have a clear pricing structure, scheduling details, and service descriptions. So then what do you do about it? Well, I'm gonna tell you what I do. Number one, number one. <laughs> There is no difference in price. Danelle also addressed this in her August Answers video about what to do when a client doesn't want a bath, and I'll link it when I'm done with the video. Um, or you can also go online, nationalcatgroomers.com slash y-bathe, I think is the URL. Um, when I give a breakdown in services to a potential client followed by the pricing, if they reply back with, oh, well, we don't need this or we don't need that, you know, what's the price then? Guess what? Same exact price you are booking that time slot in my salon and you are booking my expertise. I have determined what I feel is appropriate to go in that service package. This is not Burger King. Number two, don't offer it. Like I said, I don't offer brush out services, but I'm gonna rephrase. Don't offer a service that you are not 100% behind. If you are struggling with getting something across to your clients, 
pricing, services, availability, your policies, for example, last minute cancellations and no-show policies, hmm. then there is a disconnect in your communication. Either you do not believe in the services you're offering and recommending, which I hope that isn't the case because then why offer them in the first place? Or there is a confidence and communication issue. These are linked together. We have to work on you being able to effectively communicate why your business operates the way it does, why you groom the way you groom. And really the client, you know, it's, I wanna go back because I have this in my notes and I wanna make sure I have it. There we go. So basically all of these things are gonna tie back to my third reason, which is you need to get the client off of the bath versus no bath, brush out versus full groom. That's not really the issue here. What you have to focus on is my third thing, which is you sell the solution, not the process. I need to talk about benefits and solving their problems compared to exactly how I'm going to do it. I need to talk about what they're going to get out of it. I have to focus on the issue that their cat is having, the issue that the client is having. Then I can say, okay, these are the, the, the process as far as what you're going to see. You're, the client has to see it from their perspective versus what happens in my salon what, you know, once the client has dropped off. So how many times have you been asked by an owner, how did you do that? Whether it was working with a difficult or aggressive pet, you worked some magic with getting their pet to look amazing, you got nails done super fast, whatever it is. When a client asks you, how did you do that? Do you break down exactly how you did it? No, of course not. And the client isn't really asking you to. You are the expert here. It took you X number of years to learn how to do this, X amount of training and practice to be able to wave that magic wand in the eyes of your clients. So you need to focus on the problems and that you and your services are the solution. Matted, we got you. Shedding, don't worry about it. Sharp nails, I'm on it. Figure out what their problem is, acknowledge their worries and issues, and then follow up with, we can definitely take care of that for you. So here's one of my little spiels. Wow, it sounds like Fluffy is shedding a lot. I have the perfect package for her, our de-shedding package. This will gently get out all that excess dead coat without her losing any length. We'll get her all cleaned up, nails trimmed, ears cleaned, the works, to make sure that she feels fantastic when she goes home and you will notice a big cut down in the hair floating around your house. And what does the client say? Oh wow, that's exactly what I need. And then I go, great, my next available appointment is blah, 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 here's their certain day of the week you like, blah, blah, blah. I talk about my scheduling at that point. Then I follow it up with pricing, but at this point, they're already on board and they're ready to book an appointment. Bada bing, bada boom. Now remember, this only works if you can A, deliver on your promise, which that means you gotta have the skills to back it up. If you don't have the skills to back it up, then there are tons and tons of resources at the National Cat Groomers so that we can whip you into a cat grooming ninja. But B, you also have to be confident in how you present this information. Don't argue, don't overcomplicate it. Keep it to the point and make sure it addresses the client's concerns. We are still in the service industry, so I always try to be professional and friendly while holding my ground on what my business does and doesn't offer. And you know what? If it's not my client's cup of tea, that's okay. If I have done my market research, put together appropriate packages for my target market, and I've priced them accordingly, then there are plenty of clients out there that I am the right fit for. So that is my little spiel today. I hope you guys have a great afternoon grooming kitties, and I will talk to you later.